Hi, and welcome to a quick demo of version 1.2 of my Sonic Pi Record Player program, which uses Touch OSC running on uh, my iPad here as an interface to drive uh, Sonic Pi, uh, which is running over here, running the program, which is listening for signals to come from Touch OSC and to control the playing of Sonic Pi synths within this. I've already got a couple of programs recorded um, on this and I'll show you the, the screen that does this in a minute but at the moment we're looking at the playing screen and just a couple of things before we start there is a input matrix for keys and when you press one of these it plays a note currently we've got the uh, piano synth um, chosen and you can see that when I hold down a note it sometimes illuminates three um, LEDs. That's because of the way the keyboard is laid out. Along the bottom it goes up in a scale like that. But you can see that when I get to the fourth note along it starts illuminating the next row up and that's because that plays the same note as that one. And we can continue going up in there. When we get to here we've actually got three notes that all play the same. That one, that one and that one. And we could if we want jump to here and so on. We could jump to there and we want to go up in sequence, we jump to the next note. I could jump at any time. These extra LEDs are turned on and off by this helper LEDs button here, and now it's only playing the key that I actually press. Um, that only works for um, manual keyboard input. When it's replaying, of course, uh, it only eliminates the, um, the LED of the note that you're actually playing. So, um, at the moment we've got a piece which has been put into memory, uh, which I recorded previously. This was recorded using the metronome here, which has got three speeds. And that enables you to get reasonable accurate timing, depending on how accurately you actually tap a key in, in relation to the metronome. And that's quite important if you want to record something, which you can then loop. And when it gets to the end, cause it to go back to the beginning. You have to specify the space you want before it starts again. Normally this will be set to one metronome beat, but you can halve it by pressing that or double it by pressing that um, if you are tapping at different rhythms. Um, and those, that's what those two rest keys up there are for. <clears throat> so I've got this set to continuous uh, looping playback at the moment. And um, we're going to turn the metronome off and we're going to play back at the fastest speed. These three buttons control the playback tempo. If you play back at S, then that's the slow, slowest of the three speeds. That's the speed at which you actually recorded um, in real time. So that's at double the record speed. And that's, uh, sorry, it's, it's about, uh, that's 190, that's 120, I think, and that's 180. So that is actually um, double the speed when we get up here. So let's just start this uh, playing back, which we'll do by pressing this. You'll see that it'll change anything here. We put it in, an, in, a, in a weird key and uh, a different font, a different uh, um, synth, which you can do there. And incidentally, uh, on the piano synth, of course, decay doesn't make that much difference. But if you're playing something like um, Texors, it does, because if you set that down very low, you get a very short note. If you move that up, you get a much longer one. Incidentally, the uh, blue keys here are an octave apart, and they are the home key um, for the key you're playing. So at the moment, I'm playing in A minor, so that's an A. Here's a minor key. Take that off, it comes down major. Not a very good synth to choose for that. But it's a bit hard to hear what the uh, for the resolution. That it... A bit better like that. So uh, we'll leave that in A minor, and this will reset itself according to what has been recorded. So let's start that playing. So once you find your way around the keyboard, you can actually put in quite a melodic line, as we've done here. When it gets to the end, it'll repeat. Now, 
that was the start of the repeat and you can see it's very seamless if i was to put in uh, a double time rest there when it gets back again here here's an extra gap there uh, so we don't actually need that in this particular case so that's one sort of genre of uh, piece which you can play if we now switch to the other screen which is over here this controls the loading and the um, saving of uh, pieces from memory um, in Sonic Pi and what I'm going to do is to switch to piece number 15 so if I touch the slot selection there you can see at the moment we've got slots 1 to 10 active if I change the slot bank here that changes to say 11 to 20 and that's going to load in 15 the same color there the sort of uh, mauve color purple color there <coughs> and these LEDs along the right hand side if they are lit show that there is actually content in the file associated with that location so for example if we went to slot 7 or 17 both of those are blank and if we load those in there'll be nothing to play let's just try it we'll leave it on 17 which has got a blank thing there if i uh, press the load button i get a rude message and it says enable load first that's so that you don't do it inadvertently you have to press the enable button which stays active for about just over a second and um, if i press it again and wait till it's finished and then press that i'm too late but if i press that and do that that's now loaded into memory it says file 17 dot json loaded that's the name of the file the json uh, suffix is because of the format of the file that is used um, and if we switch back again remember that was an empty file so if i press play there isn't anything there uh, that actually should have gone off again i wonder whether we've actually not let's just um uh, it may be in an old format because i've changed the file size here let me just record something here that's how you do it but I won't put anything in the file and we'll go back here and we'll save into slot number uh, 17 which is loaded by saying save again a safety device I need to enable save press save that's now saved and this um, uh, led here the right hand of these two shows that it's sl slot 17 was the last one accessed if I load that um, back again enable load and load and we come back and we play then well still something not going quite right there that should switch off uh, when it sees there's nothing there but we'll leave that for the moment and we'll move on it certainly didn't play anything and let's move back here and switch to slot number 15 um, which is the one that I actually sorry slot, slot number I forgot which one it was now I think it's uh, this one we want. Let's just try that and see. We'll enable load that. Let me just listen to the beginning of that. Yeah, that's the one I want. And I'm going to set this ready to play. This time I'm only going to play it once through because it's quite long. And so we'll select that as one uh, repeat. We're going to set it for medium speed playback. And I'm going to set the um, metronome for maximum speed because that is also going to uh, control the no sorry to minimum speed because that is also going to control the speed of the synced <coughs> drums which are synced to notes in what you're playing back regardless of the speed so that they can sort of keep more or less in step with each other we'll leave the payback leads on for the start and we'll start this playing playing at the moment with the FM synth and I just changed the decay slightly to make a slightly longer note now you can almost play chords in fact the two notes sound very close together because they're actually processed one after the other so they won't actually change the true chord but not far off it so you can actually play a sort of harmony as you go along even with just doing this but you can also add extras as you go along I get to turn the playback leads off
and I'm going to choose, um, let's say, try, and I'm going to set the decay quite high, the volume quite high, and we'll play along. And if you want to use the recording facility in Sonic Pi, you can actually record the audio of the original playback and also the extra notes that you put in here and produce a composite of the two of them. Turn the playback LEDs on again. You can stop the drums at any time. You can add them in again. And you can change the it's just a, 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 a boom and then two cymbal beats and you can change the speed of that a bit faster there or even much faster. Do you see the decay being moved up there and down again to very short notes. Fade that note out. Change to profit to C minor. Okay, some ship lead at the same time. Let's turn off the that's why it should lead. Let's turn off the lead so that we can indicate this. Turn playback leads on again so that it follows what's being played. Here's the loud bit, played with TB303. as it's playing and as I say you can play along quite hard to hear in the against actually that's probably not a good time to do it actually the end of the piece but it's still actually live so we can go on playing if we want to and if we were recording in Sonic Pi the audio then this would be added to the recording so even though it's finished stopped playing back this has actually started and if we really wanted to we could start the whole thing again and there we are we decided that after all we wanted more than one repeat we just started it again but I will actually stop it at that point and stop the video. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this. The whole program is available for download freely from my GIST site. And there's an article accompanying this, which is detailed below the video in the blurb below this.